Step behind the camera and welcome to the Eye Photography Podcast. So, Lee, welcome along to the podcast. I hope you're well. Thank you for having me. I'm good, thanks. Good, good. I mean, I know I appreciate maybe, you know, you're not the world-renowned photographer that you want to be. You're probably only a few weeks away from kind of reaching that point, of course. So, for those people that have not seen maybe much of your photography kind of just at this point, and obviously those that listen to us in the podcast, I thought it'd be good just to kind of get a little bit of a, a bio really from you as to kind of who you are as a photographer, what you do, what you enjoy, etc. So, I thought, yeah, a good chance for you to kind of uh, spill the beans a little bit. Yeah, uh, well, um, I mean, I actually I got into photography when um, I was working for a DJ sort of events company in London, um, and the owner used to ask us constantly to be taking pictures of all the setup and things like that for his social media. Um, so we sort of just started there, really, and me and some of the other guys that worked from used to have a little competition of whose picture would he pick. <laughs> of social media um but me being somewhat competitive i uh, i used to follow the photographers about looking for the angles and <laughs> and and trying to get the, the best picture um and then it sort of went from there really i started i did some sort of youtube stuff to sort of try and improve what i was doing um and then I was, I was speaking to the to the wife about it and said like, i'm really up for doing a course and she found you guys and bought it for me for Christmas. So oh, wow. the the rest after that is sort of history as such, and yeah. you know, um, just got got cracking and and learning as I went. Really. So, uh, so have you kind of come to this then, like photography, let's say as a hobby, a little bit? I say later in life. Obviously, you're no more than twenty one. Um, but yeah, I'm glad you're agreeing with me on that. <laughs> But yeah, it's because it, 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 I've spoken to people that have, you know, they've had a little bit of interest as, you know, in photography or taking pictures from when they were kind of quite young and then they've just not touched it for years and then come back to it. But have had you ever kind of been interested in it from a young age or was it just because of work to a degree? Um, I'll be, yeah, I mean, yeah, it was because of work, if I'm honest with you. It was, it was never something I really picked up, if that makes sense. Like, yeah. I, I, I appreciated a good picture, but I never really went out of my way to try and take one. I was always one of those, like, if we went to a party, my wife's phone would be full of pictures and mine I have one if you're lucky. Um, so it was quite a, a change for me to suddenly start being the one that's like, look at this, I've taken 200 pictures of the night. <laughs> <laughs> um but um, it was one of those like I'm really happy it did happen because it's it's turned out to be something I really enjoy doing. Oh, uh, I mean, it's it's really interesting that yeah, not everybody kind of you know has a lingering for photography from a young age, and it you know it's just a sidling passion, and then it comes to something else later in life as well. It's nice to know that you know that you know a little bit more into adult years as well. It's something that can still be picked up and and brought into it because I mean I I've obviously had a look at your photography over the kind of past um well, how many how long is it that you've been with eye photography is it what, two years um, yeah a couple of years now yeah couple of years yeah so i you know i've seen i've seen kind of obviously loads loads of different images from you and there's a lot of variation in terms of the the kind of the content the subject matter as well there's a lot of diversity in the genres that you shoot but there is a really, really strong consistency um in the style and i think i mean i think that's a huge plus point because not not many people either find a style that they're happy with. Some people just can't, you know, figure out what that consistency is, et cetera, to it. But that's one thing I've seen a lot in your work that it's quite, it's, there's it's kind of lots of rich contrast. There's some kind of dark and moody tones. Is that something you're conscious of when you're shooting or you're editing? Do you kind of always try to keep that in mind? Do you, you know, do you use presets or things like that to achieve those looks? How, how, do, you, how do you go about your photography, I suppose, is what I'm saying? Well, I mean, I, I, I sort of spent a, a long time, probably the best part of a year, sort of just playing with styles, just sort of mucking around with what I liked and trying to work out what that style would actually be for me. And I seem to all, all I, bleh, I seem to, sorry, teeth falling out, I can't say any words. <laughs> I, seem to, I seem to naturally um, uh, 
gravitate towards those darker, more contrast styles. But then obviously within that, I've sort of experimented as well. And I, I spent quite a lot of time doing sort of some art, like making art pop out more and doing really a lot of um, high contrast sort of style. Um, and so, like, as time's gone on, my ch- my style has changed, but it's changed within that that darker range as such. Yeah. Um, I sometimes I've tried to go light, and it just it just doesn't feel right for me, and so I end up reverting back. Um, but when I was finding that style, I, I relied heavily on like presets or like YouTube videos on like different styles to sort of try and work out how things were done. Um, nowadays, it's sort of I. I was sort of like, oh yeah, I need to do a bit there and a bit there here. And I sort of, that style just naturally sort of pops out to me. Um, so yeah, it's sort of a bit of both. Sometimes yeah. presets, you know, like I, if I like something I've done, I'll save the preset and I'll come back to it later. Um, but it, 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 I, I try not to overthink. If I overthink, I tend to mess up, yeah, do something wrong. So I sort of just, I take what I see and then, work with it from there as much as I can. I, I think that's that's a nice approach. And I've I've done that previously that yeah, I've certainly noticed that if you if you kind of spend absolutely ages on an image and you're tweaking this, tweaking that, tweaking this, you end up and it becomes an absolute mess. And you know, you've you've lost so much time. And sometimes the, the simplest edit is the is the one that's really needed for the image. And sometimes like you say, not every image works well in a certain way, but that you know, that process that you've gone through, that kind of trial and error, because I imagine there may have been lots of images that you've edited or you've taken, you just, like you said, you didn't, it just didn't feel right. So you kind of discard a little bit, but it ultimately you end up, I think, learning as a photographer, what does appeal to you because your subject matter still varies a little bit. Um, whether that's just through the images that, you know, just the ones that I've seen, etc. But do you see yourself as a particular type of photographer in terms of genre you know to say like is it is it just still life is it just portraits you know do you have a particular thing that you do kind of lean to a little bit more um i, I seem to lean quite a lot towards cars um i, I like my cars i always have um so that, I, i'd say if i had to pick one that but yeah. I, i'm more of a of a I'm going to create my own term here, more of a lifeist. Like if something's going on and it appeals to me, I'm going to take my camera. I'm going to try and get some good pictures. Um, but then even, you know, I, I've pushed myself out um, and I've got a, a press pass to an anime convention. I haven't known anything to do with anime at all. Like my brother knows it all. I haven't got a clue, but I thought, hey, something different. Let's go along to that and see what happens. And, and that's sort of a lot of what my photography is like. It's like, you know, I'll, I'll, um, I'll book to go somewhere and I'll take my camera because I might find something. Um, I, I join National Trust because there's plenty of places about and not everyone goes to them. So you see some things that you wouldn't maybe normally see. Um, and then other times it's just I'm walking down the street and, you know, creative inspiration strikes me and off I go. <laughs> And it is so nice. I mean, like the thing, I've done the exact same thing with the National Trust. We were members for a couple of years and they they love, because uh, I think they have competitions, especially like on Instagram, they love you like kind of um, tagging them in into, into shots as well. So it's a nice way to get them shared out. But you're right, there's not many people that go there with their camera. So sometimes if you pick the right time, et cetera, you, you can get kind of a fairly quiet moment to, to kind of capture some landscapes or whatever it is. But, yep. but yeah, I, I, I love the idea of how you approach photography that if you've got your camera with you always, and you're kind of looking around, chances are you'll spot an opportunity, but you know, if you get too stuck in a way to say, I'm only going to shoot this and only going to shoot that, then obviously you, you'll end up having a portfolio that's, that's just of that genre, but you may sometimes miss the, beautiful moments in life where you're thinking oh actually that could have been really cool and um so yeah i i think there's there's kind of a lot of a merit to that really um oh one thing i mean though we don't get too heavy in terms of tech talk etc you know gear reviews on the the podcast it's nice to know sometimes what people are actually shooting with these days so especially when when we get to have a look at your images as well people can kind of understand you know what camera kind of equals quality somewhat but what what do you shoot with what's your camera and lenses what kind of setup do you have 
well, I've, I've actually still got the same camera I started with. Um, but again, my amazing wife bought for me. Um, like I was looking for a camera. Well, I was looking for a DSLR, but um, I was very unsure as to what to get. And then I ended up finding one online that come with extra lenses and stuff like that. So I was like, you know what? As a beginning point, that's that's going to do. Like that will be what I work with. So I've actually got the Canon 1100D. Excellent. As my camera of choice, well, my only camera. <laughs> <laughs> Your wife's camera of choice. <laughs> yeah. Um, but it's turned out like it's been like a real good little workhorse for me. I mean, doing like rapid shots and stuff like that, it's not great. It it's it doesn't rapid fire very fast. Um, but it sort of leads me to to thinking on my feet a little bit and trying to preempt things rather than necessarily just seeing it happen. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, and, and the fact that it's an older camera, I'm sort of not that worried about taking... Like, I look after it, obviously, but I'm not going to cry if it breaks, you know? Like, I go into some situations with it. Like, there's a there's a picture of mine where I'm literally... If you'd have seen me taking it, you'd have been worried for it because I was <laughs> <laughs> I was sat on... A, I was stood on the bottom step of this thing, holding onto a wall, leaning right out over this river... And, you know, if you'd have seen it, you might have cried if it was a, a high-end camera, but, yeah, you know. Uh, so there is, uh, it's, to me, there's merit in having a having an older, an older mm. camera about. But I also use the, um, so lenses-wise, I've got like um, 18 to 15 mil, 18 to 15, <laughs> 18 to 55 mil. I've got 75 to 300, um, and I've got a 1018 um, wide-angle um, lens as well. Uh, so there's some gaps in there, but they will build eventually. I'm still early in my journey as far as I'm concerned. Exactly, yeah. But I and then for the... to worry. Yeah, I think you've, you've nah. got probably, a, you know, a good kind of trinity of lenses there that for, yeah. for the styles of work that you do, you know, like your car photography, especially, you know, wide lenses are, are yeah. great on there as well. And, you know, anything to like 50 mil for detail shots are great. Yeah, sorry, you yeah. carry on. Um, and I was just going to say, and, and then for the times when I, the rare times when I don't, um phone going off <laughs> the rare times that i don't have my camera with me i've i, I use my pixel uh, google pixel 4xl which is awesome for shots i've yeah. taken many good pictures with it Thanks. i mean and that that's it you don't i completely understand that i've i've read many many times where people have bought like these super high end you know canon r's or nikon d whatever they're up to now and and they they are so precious with them that they they would end up maybe using their phone more often because they're so nervous about taking the big camera out it being lost being damaged being stolen and all that and i get that but i'm like that's what insurance is for and if it's just going to end up sitting in your house and sitting in the bag all the time it's a complete waste of an investment and i've been looking at upgrading my camera um recently and my first thought was to basically trade in what i've got and i thought well no if i kind of keep it I've always got like what I refer to as a trash cam that something that, yeah. you know, if it got battered, it got broke. All right, no worry, but I've got a better camera at least as well. But it's something that I know would still propel me to, to get out and I can still take decent quality shots on it. So mm. I, I think you, 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 you're right, you know, and we always say, obviously it's the photographer that makes the image, not the camera. And you've got, you know, as we always will show for the video version of the podcast, um, a selection of Lee's images. And you can see that even on a slightly older camera, it's the, do you say again, the Canon, 1100 d 1100 d you know what quality you can get so it's all about oh. the lighting the settings etc as well so it really does kind of show that you don't have to necessarily be going up to the the highest ends of cameras it's when you're beginning at least anyway yeah. but, I mean, I mean, i'd love to be able to afford to but i don't think my wife's that generous <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think this is one decision you'll, you'll have to make on your own in the end as well. She may, she may be think so, yeah. thousands. Unfortunately. I might have to start making this photography thing earn money first. <laughs> well, that, that's it. Yeah, she's got you started now. It's literally it's over to you now. She's giving you the baton. <laughs> but I mean, as you say, going back a couple of uh, a couple of minutes when you talked about experimenting and that's kind of how you found your feet. I think it's always interesting to know, or less. Um, what kind of hurdles that you came up against because you have got a really nice style and a good consistency.
but I can't help but feel that for any photographer, that obviously doesn't happen overnight. And there must have been moments where it's like, oh, I'm gone, no, this has not worked, or I'm not really getting to grips with this yet. But whether it was through shooting or through editing or just learning about your camera, what what would you have said would be like the hardest thing that you've you've had to kind of learn over the past couple of years or something that is still taking time to understand for yourself? Um I mean, to be honest with you, at, bit, at different times, I've struggled with different things. When I started, it was just pure overwhelmed with what I could do, um, but I didn't know what the hell was the right thing to do. Um, I do I, I do struggle with things when, when it gets slightly more technical. I'm not there yet. Like when it, in terms of like, let's say crop factors, for example, I'm constantly forgetting them. <laughs> can't remember what the hell's going on. Um, and I get confused as to what lenses will work with my camera or won't, you know. So there are, there are moments, but one thing I did find with the the, the eye photography course was actually that it, it just broke down that learning into, into bite-sized chunks that I could concentrate on just one area. And, and that, you know, like this week we're doing... Um, I don't know, shutter speeds. Um, and it meant that I could just spend the week or two weeks, however long I wanted, to just really knuckle down and work out how my camera works with it, what sort of things I can do with it. Um, but it's sort of become full circle because it's now got to the point where I, what can I use? Because I've <laughs> there's too much now. I, I know it's so I never know exactly, you know, which one should I use for this situation. So that sort of led me then to like the well, try not to overthink it. Just work with what you've you've got and try and remember like some key points. Like, you know, I'll play with your depth of field or change your shutter speed and things like that. So you'll find I won't only take like one or two pictures or something. I will take four or five, but I'll take them with like a different depth of field or a different um, different aperture, for example, um, just to try and cover myself for those different things that I. Yeah, I sometimes don't always remember. Yeah, and I, I think that's it's a it's a very valid thing, and I think it's something that I, I imagine a lot of people that are watching or listening would kind of resonate to or relate to. But you know, and, and even I don't. You know, I've been doing photography for for years, but I'll look at something and not necessarily know what what the, maybe the best settings are. I know what I want to achieve. And I know maybe how I want it to look, but to get to that point, sometimes I'm like, right, have I got the right stuff with me? And and you're right, sometimes, you know, you don't have all the right kit, you know, all the right answers there and then for that moment, but you can only work with what you've got. You know, there's not an endless limitation to, you know, camera gear, unless you've got all the money in the world and you can carry everything with you. But yeah, feasibly, and I think that's where photographers have got to become creative, that you've got to work within your remit of what lenses you've got and the capability of your camera and your knowledge itself, and then go, right, how can I get the final shot that you want? But do you feel that you're kind of, you're progressing with your work? Are you, are you kind of getting happier and happier with, you know, with what you're taking as you take it? Because I've started to see that you've, you've done a few um, commissions, you know, you've, you've been hired by people, haven't you? So that's got to be yes. a big plus point. Um. I'm not going to lie to you, through each and every one of those, I had nervous sweats like you wouldn't believe. <laughs> <laughs> I was absolutely, absolutely petrified of messing up and not getting the shot. So the fact that I've done them and they've come out okay is sort of a, a reassuring that, um, that I can achieve what I need to achieve. But it's, it, it's still, like when I, I, I did a baby shoot for the first time, few weeks ago never ever taken pictures of babies before so i was just like winging it i, I had i had a few bits i'd read some stuff online i was like yeah, well let's just see what we do and see you know see what comes out of it and so it's been it's been interesting <laughs> learning to do those things i mean i because because i used to like i say i used to work for a dj company i'm used to going in to environments and not necessarily knowing anyone or understanding what the full plan is uh, and just sort of making it, <laughs> making it seem confident. Um, but like, you know, I, I had a rough idea on each and every one of them, what I wanted to do, but it's, I just had no idea how I was going to get there. Um, I, I think that's, that's so many, that's, that's a kind of a, a totally normal thing, especially in the early days of when you're being hired because you're like, oh my God, there's money involved now. It, it, it's, it's serious. But I think after a little while, it 
that kind of fake confidence, so to speak, you know, you've got to kind of just pick yourself up a little bit going into the situation. It becomes real and it becomes natural that, you know, then you start to take on other jobs and you think, well, no, I've done it previously. And so there's no reason why I couldn't do it again. And I, I just absolutely love your, whether it's <laughs> stubbornness or whether it's just bravery, I'm not sure yet. I'm just going, never photographed a child before. You know what? Let's start with newborns. <laughs> it's like probably the hardest area of <laughs> portrait photography to begin with. And you're like, I read something, let's just go for it as well. And I, I love yeah. that because it just, it's, it's something that I think, yeah, people, you know, should try, it's to try new things. And I think sometimes people look at it and go, God, that's scary. I'm never going to go for it as well. But look what's come out of it. You've got some beautiful mm. images. You've got a very happy client. You may get recommendations and reviews and that could lead on to other things as well. So it's, yeah, I, I just absolutely love that kind of, that passion that, that's driven you to go and do it. I mean, would you do it again after after doing it already now? Would you do it um, you? I think it's something that I won't necessarily like, push to do yeah. but it come about I'd do it like it, it was it was good um and the parents that let me photograph little willow bless her is uh were amazing they were just like you just do whatever you want you need to do like you know, do you need anything from us and stuff like that. so that was that was really helpful but what like I have you know after going back through my pictures I've looked at them and gone hey, I could have done that or Maybe next time, if I do it, I'll take a background and not not do it on the the duvet on the bed or yeah. things like that. Have sort of, you know, um, when I look back, I can criticise myself for. Obviously, the, the, the clients love them, so yeah. that's the main thing. Um, but it's just a case of I've, I've always been comfortable being uncomfortable. If that makes any sense, at all. I I don't let it. I try not to let it stop me. Uh, normally, my reaction is to go big rather than go and go in on myself I normally go well yeah. now let's just put one foot in front of the other and see what happens <laughs> and that, and that's brilliant because it just leads you to situations you may never have expected and leads you to opportunities you may have never expected and I, the one thing I found in photography especially when you're starting to go professional or you're looking for work is that it's all about networking it's it's who you know and you know one client leads to another who leads to another and it can be completely different and unrelated jobs but it, it, it's just that networking aspect and if you're willing to put yourself out there you'll get opportunities that you never would if you basically just waited for the client to come to you all the time or you just went I'm only going to do this job. I'm only going to do that job. So I, I think it's in, in the long run, it'll only be a benefit. You may have to go through a few more newborn baby shoots, <laughs> but then someone may turn up and go, I've got this beautiful Bugatti I've been wanting to photograph. Yeah. Oh, you that'll be all right. right. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, the two may never connect as well, but you never know where it goes. But yeah. one of the, uh, one of the final questions I wanted to ask you, Lee, is something we ask um, everybody that comes on, uh, on the podcast is like our time travel question that, I mean, even though you've only been kind of, you know, going with the camera for for a couple of years or so but if you could take yourself back to when uh your good wife bought you that camera to begin with and the whole journey began is the one little nugget golden nugget of information that you could offer your younger self and you know, to make photography that little bit easier or something that you know you wish you would have known when you were younger um i wish it like in early days i wish i'd have been bolder in terms of putting my photos out there not just on on i, I photography I, I i started pretty much straight away but um elsewhere getting them out there for other people to see because you know it, it, i've always said a true friend a true friend will give you honest criticism right and the the ones that aren't true friends will be like, oh that's nice yeah <laughs> i don't want oh that's nice um i want to know which bits are good and which bits are bad um and so getting them out there early whether you think it's good or not helps yeah. because that feedback really sort of helps guide where you're going. Um, you know, and then, and then there's other people that just flat out right go, oh, that's a no good picture. And you're like, well, who cares? It's not you, is it? Yeah, I, I think uh, there's, there's, a, there's a fine balance between 
um, feedback, constructive criticism, and just plain trolling or, or, you know, people just kind of placating, as you say, say, oh, that's really pretty, that's really nice, but maybe they aren't able to articulate really, or they don't want to upset anybody in a way. So yeah, it's hard to work through the minefield a little bit yeah. maybe as well. Yeah. But I think that that's, that's a fair point. I mean, now that you are getting your images out of there, um, I'm sure everybody, you know, is listening or watching is going to want to see more from you. So have you got uh, any websites or can we find you on social media? I'll, I'll add all the links to the show notes for anybody that's listening or watching. They want to have a look at uh, yeah. these stuff, but do, do you have any sites that people can find you on? Yeah, so I use your social media, Facebook and Instagram is just Lee Murray Photography. Um, I do have a site. I, I, I don't really use it that often, but it's there just more of a sort of placeholder for future things, which is uh, Lee Murray Photography dot my pixie set dot com. Um, it's just yeah, in the future that'll just be Lee Murray Photography dot com, but I'm not paying for it until I'm being paid. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. <laughs> so if people want to see the best of Lee's website, you need to hire him. <laughs> so yeah, that's it. For lots and lots of money. <laughs> <laughs> we got to expect his wife to pay for the website as well. <laughs> well, Lee, well, Lee, it's been an absolute pleasure having you on. I've had a lovely time. And it's been it's just been so nice to kind of um, see that there's still people out there experimenting, still kind of, you know, learning about photography and they haven't fully settled on, you know, what they want to do if they, if they want to have a particular the direction that they just enjoy photographing a bit of everything really and you know for anybody that's listening and watching hopefully you know at least story's been kind of quite resonating and relatable for you as well so if you've got any questions if you ever anything you want to ask Lee then you can always get in touch with our photography and we can pass them on but Lee hopefully maybe we can kind of catch up with you in another 6-12 months and uh, and see you know where you're up to maybe you know if you've done a few more newborn shoots or if you've got to that high-end car is that is that the kind of the the, the the Everest of your photography is that where you'd like to be as a car photographer? Um, I wouldn't say no if that's the way that it happened, but I sort of look at things like um, I, I have a have a way of thinking my brain works, which is I call it a long lead heuristic, which is like walking with a dog on a long lead. Like my mind wants to go from A to Z, but my dog wants to go Q and then over to R, and I just sort <laughs> of go with it and and see what. So I have a, I have a, like an overall goal. Yeah. no real set plan so i just pick stuff up as i go along well that would be cool i mean that would be maybe more fun you know to pick it up in like 12 months and and, and see where the dog has gone in effect as well whether it's <laughs> yeah. still on the leash or running around the yeah. forest on its own <laughs> <laughs> well thank you so much anyway for coming on it's been an absolute pleasure uh, and for those that are listening and watching thank you very very much for sticking along and following and subscribing as well and hopefully we will catch up with you in the in the future and we'll see what's what that'd be great thank you for having me lovely well thank you very much for listening and we'll see you in the next show